will discuss um, a case uh, study from uh, a site here in uh, Switzerland, Aventicum or Avanche, as uh, the town is known today. You can see it's situated uh, in cross, uh, close proximity to Bern, in between uh, an area of three lakes, the Lake Moral, Lake Bien, and Lake Neuchâtel. Basically, Aventicum is known uh, because it was uh, the capital city of uh, the region of the Helvetii during the Roman periods, but um, uh, we also have some uh, small evidence regarding the medieval past of this uh, city. Basically, we know more about the later medieval times than the time I'm going to discuss because there hasn't been uncovered uh, too many sites um, during this time period, like the 10th and 11th uh, century AD. However, we have some evidence starting from the population itself when in 2019 uh, a cemetery site was excavated, as you can see there, um, at the periphery of the Roman uh, city, and it's called the Surfus Est. Here you have a general view of the cemetery. It was a small section of it, most probably, that was excavated. And our uh, skeleton of interest is the one found in grade 17. And uh, we are talking about um, a male individual and the estimation of uh, sex was based on cranial and pel pelvic skeletal tissue. It was basically um, fairly good uh, uh, preserved, so we had all uh, the relevant uh, skeletal features to do both of the sex and the aging. And um, uh, regarding aging, it was estimated to be 40 to 45 years uh, old, uh, based on dental attrition, pubic synthesis, and the auricular surfaces. What was uh, striking, and you can see here with these all uh, uh, colored circles, the amount of pathologies that we could uh, detect on uh, this uh, particular skeleton. So, uh, starting from the more common one, he had a wide range of dental, dental pathologies, and then moving to the most severe one, he suffered, he suffered from osochromiale, trauma in several parts of uh, the axial skeleton, and as well as um, uh, several joints uh, were also affected by degenerative joint diseases. And if we see them uh, uh, step by step, here we have a case of os acromiale, which basically is the failure of uh, fusing um, this uh, tiny part on the top of uh, uh, the shoulder, which is known as um, acromion. It's uh, usually a genetic or developmental uh, defect, and uh, sometimes it's th it is thought to be as a result from mechanical stress on the developing acromion. The area affected, uh, uh, as you can see here, is uh, between the mesoacromion and the preacromion, which has like at the end of um, uh, the acromion uh, process. Arthritic changes were multiple on the skeleton, so we start from the sternoclavicular joint, where both sides, the left and the right, were equally affected, starting from the manubrium, the head of um, uh, uh, the sternum, and uh, equally the uh, sides of uh, the left and the right uh, um, clavicles at the proximal ends. There we could um, detect extensive osteophytic formation, this new bony outgrowth around the joint, as well as porosity. We also had similar lesions on the vertebral column, uh, spread from the cervical vertebrae to the lumbar vertebrae, and then again you have the most um, uh, pathognomonic features for this type of degenerative lesions that uh, you can note on uh, the vertebral column. And you have uh, examples here uh, of uh, this type of uh, degenerations affecting both cervical and lumbar vertebrae. Upper arm as well was affected by degenerative joint disease and especially the um, joint between the humerus and the radius that uh, uh, you can see to your uh, left. And um, these uh, uh, specific um, uh, features were uh, um, located in the right part of, of the distal humerus and the right proximal part of the radius, where you have uh, one of the most secure uh, signs of osteoarthritic lesions because you have this nicely polished area on um, uh, the humerus uh, and the radius, which we call a burnation. And then you have similar 
uh, lesions at the uh, joint of the humerus and the ulna, the humeral ulna joint, where typical signs of uh, osteoarthritis were also observed. But the most impressive uh, uh, pathology that we saw in this individual uh, was that uh, uh, beside uh, some uh, uh, more arthritic changes in the wrist joint, and in particular at the left uh, uh, distal radius and ulna, uh, what was uh, striking it was the fusion, the ankylosis, of all the carpal bones and uh, the metacarpals of uh, um, the left hand, as you can see in the picture here and in the uh, micro CT scan that we did. Uh, it didn't end here, he had also some uh, <laughs> trauma on uh, the skeleton, one of the most uh, common uh, traumatic incidents we come across in, in the biarchaeological record, the so-called perifracture, when the distal part of the ulna is fractured and sometimes it is associated with cases of interpersonal violence when you are supposed to defend from a blow to the head, although this is a controversial issue and still open to discussion. And another fracture at the left ulna, which is located to the mid, to the distal one-third of the shaft. And uh, one tiny fragment of rib also presented uh, a type of uh, a fracture. Most probably it was the right a rib. It was really fragmentary, so siding, even if they are um, complete, sometimes it's a little bit uh, tricky. But the, the fracture, again, uh, most probably an oblique one or transverse one, was located um, towards the head of the rib. So, Basically, let's uh, see what caused this severe ankylosis, ankylosis in, in the wrist of this individual, in the hand of the individual that we saw. There is a wide range of pathologies that uh, can uh, contribute to this type of ankylosed carpals and metacarpals uh, all together in this uh, amorphous mass that we have seen. I think the most, uh, um, let's say, uh, favorable candidate is rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, here you can see uh, what we used to do when it comes to differential diagnosis to check for uh, pathologies, how they affect the entire skeleton. And in this case, we were lucky because it was fairly complete, so we can see exactly what happens in conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, or other type, types of arthropathies like psoriatic um, uh, arthropathy. Uh, there is also a possibility that a trauma was present, but uh, for example, the CT didn't show any evidence of trauma. Uh, I'm now uh, working on this case with a colleague uh, in the uh, Lausanne Hospital who is a very good radiologist and he has seen millions of cases in living patients, so maybe we can together uh, see better or for sure he's going to see things better than I do. Uh, there is also the case of infection, uh, or even in some cases you have some congenital uh, cases where uh, an individual can be born with this type of uh, fusion in, uh, in the hand. For the moment, I would suggest rheumatoid arthritis as the most uh, possible uh, candidate. And focusing on this, uh, I would uh, discuss a little bit uh, uh, what we know from modern clinical data regarding arth arthritis, because it is really affecting um, uh, uh, a, a large, let's say, a percentage of modern uh, population, and it is actually laid as a chronic disabling condition, often causing pain and deformity, uh, especially uh, dangerous because it is known to be associated with various other systematic effects. For example, it can affect uh, visibility, uh, the respiratory system, the lungs, as well uh, introduce cardiac problems. So it's not only the disease itself and, uh, um, uh, let's say, a last stage uh, when you have an ankylosed uh, joint, you can also suffer from uh, different um, systematic effects uh, that can be caused by rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, it is known to strike the most productive years of adulthood, so you can have an onset between 20 to 40 years, 
although sometimes it, uh, it differs in between uh, uh, patients and uh, sometimes the progress of the disease is different. In some individuals can progress very rapidly while in other individuals these uh, very um, painful symptoms uh, appear in a, a later uh, and more advanced stages. However, what it is known it is that within 10 years of the onset, we know that at least 50% of patients, uh, at least from surveys in developing countries, they are unable to hold down a full-time job. So basically this individual was not able to work uh, um, in, uh, um, and, and function in full. And um, when it comes to medieval texts, uh, we don't have the time to go through all these medical theses that um, uh, refer to uh, arthritic changes, but it was fairly common. So you do have a, a lot of uh, inferences from a medical treatises of the medieval era discussing um, uh, how painful arthritis could have been for uh, the population of the time. And I only give you this by Bartholomew Anglicus in the 13th century saying that arthritis is an ache and evil in the fingers and toes with swelling and sore ache. So this uh, condition and the effects and the symptoms sometimes were more or less diagnosed. However, as we heard today earlier about the, the daily idea how many years you live in a good life uh, until you die, uh, we could estimate that this individual most probably really lived for a good amount of his life in this type of pain and uh, disability. Although it's not possible, of course, to understand when exactly the disease started. We take the uh, standards of um, uh, modern clinical uh, databases in order to have uh, such a rough uh, estimation. And then here comes the questions regarding a specific society, a spe specific uh, debilitating uh, condition or conditions, because equally fractures affect uh, the um, a life on the individual. And if we need like three months for an individual to heal properly, not taking into account that uh, uh, other factors uh, play an important role like age, uh, sex, nutritional status, etc. Then again, we know that having two hands uh, fractures, two arms fractured, plus an uh, ankylosis wrist, this makes your life or your everyday life uh, quite uh, difficult. When it comes to burial context, you could see from uh, uh, the topography of the cemetery that this individual was not excluded. It was buried among other uh, counterparts. So somehow his uh, social identity for having this debilitating condition was not, uh, uh, was not affected. However, we all, all always have to have in mind the idea of or how the medieval male was preserved and he had, he had to fulfill the very specific societal uh, expectations about work, about marriage, about uh, his uh, full performance in uh, several aspects of everyday life. So for sure this individual suffered from li limited activity, he had a painful everyday life and this uh, resulted in somehow losing the productivity and uh, the participation needed in daily communal activities. Maybe basic tasks necessary for day-to-day -day independent living was also in a way limited. And uh, of course, then comes in mind that in this stage, in this health uh, status, he needed some type of care, which starts from the family and then to society. But we don't have a very extended idea uh, of how society, how uh, he was uh, in a state to have access to specified uh, or uh, specialized medical treatment. We don't know if uh, uh, professional um, uh, medical uh, uh, were living at the time in medieval Aventico. And of course, we don't know that uh, anyone can look for uh, first aids in uh, herbal remedies. And for example, uh, the um, plant Ruta Draveolens, the common root was very well known at least uh, for arthritic um, uh, uh, pains and for individuals suffering from this type of uh, pains. So uh, this is a glimpse of um, uh, life in an individual living in a medieval city around the 11th 
century um, AD and uh, give us an idea more or less of his condition. However, to me, that was really striking and I think it's worth mentioning and lo worth looking in our assembly is that uh, fractures and arthritic changes can uh, contribute a lot to um, having a, a life of pain and disability. We are usually looking for the spectacular cases and perhaps re rheumatic arthritis is one of them. Few cases are recorded in the biochemical record for the medieval period. But even if someone suffers from uh, only a de degenerative uh, uh, lesions on the spine or in any other joint of uh, his body, this really affects his life. So we can also think about this aspect of everyday life in the past and how it really affected everyday level and everyday activities. Thank you.